In this video we're going to take a look at the you can't see me challenge on Hack the Box. It's an easy reversing challenge and the description says can you see me. So we'll begin by downloading the file and take a copy of that into our local directory. And let's go and do some basic file checks. So the first thing we'll do is just check the file type. And we'll see that it's a 64-bit LSB executable. We can make it executable so that we can run it as well. And if we try to run the program, it says welcome. Let's try and enter in some text. And it says, I said you can't see me. So we might want to run strings on it. Let's try and get strings that are greater than 10. And we can see straight away that it, we have a string here saying this is the password. And then we have some jumbled up characters as well. Perhaps this is a flag which is going to be decoded. Let's try and run it again and enter in that string. And we still get about the same message, I said you can't see me. Okay, so let's try and run it with Ltrace. And we can see here then, we've got the printf call, welcome, and then it's running fgets and taking an input off us. Let's try and put in that, this is a password again. And we can actually see the string compare which is being done here. So it's comparing, this is a password to, whoops, you did it, see me. So let's go and try and enter that in instead as a password. If we try and run it again, we'll run it with Ltrace, why not? Paste that in, and then we get back our message. Whoops, you did see me, and we've got our flag. Let me run that again without the without Ltrace to make it a little bit more clear. And there's the, the flag. So the flag was essentially the, the password that we needed to enter there. So that was quite a quick challenge. Let's, um, just for a bit of bonus content, let's open up Geodra, create a new project, and have a look at the decompiled code. It takes a minute to set up a new project here, so I'll skip through this. And once Geodra's open, we can see here we have our decompiler on the right, we have our disassembled code here on the left, and on the very left we have our program sections here up at the top and we have our imports, exports and functions. So the first thing we'd probably want to do here is go and have a look to see if there's a main function. In this case there isn't, so we'll go to the entry function and the reason there isn't, if we go back and have a look at the file type, we'll see that this has been stripped, so it's been stripped of the debugging symbols and we don't have the function names in there. So you can see some kind of randomly named functions and um, if we have a look at our entry function, what we're interested in is the first function that's called here. So we'll double click that and that'll take us into the decompiled code on the right and our disassembled code here on the left. So we can go through each line of code if we want and as we highlight different lines of code, it'll highlight the corresponding assembly code. So this is a good way to get to know um, how assembly instructions match up to the actual decompiled code. We can also go to have a look at the strings in the program, so if there was a particular string of interest that we might want to skip to, for example, here we know it's printing the flag here, so it has hack the box and then the format specifier for the string in the middle of the curly braces, so we might click on that and that will highlight this in the code, so we can see here the hack the box string, and we'll go and see what functions this is referenced in. And then we can go and double click that and go straight to the function and we can see that actually it's referenced right here, this is where it's going to print out the flag. So if you have a closer look at the code here, we'll see that variables are declared at the beginning. We have most of those variables being assigned values after we, we get the welcome message being printed out. And we can see that each of these are hex values. If we go over to our disassembled code, then we'll be able to see the strings for a lot of these. So for example, here the first string is this is the password. If we take a copy of this hex of these hex values and then we can take them to Cybershare for ascii to hex.com and convert them and we'll see that we have this is in reverse order so that's the string that's being pushed onto the stack where we're not able to see the string here for example down here with these hex values we can highlight them and see what they translate to so if it translates into a character you'll be able to see the character there you'll be able to see the decimal value so we have these values placed on the stack, we have some more values which are placed down here which we can't actually see the string representation of. So let's let's take a copy of that and go and see what that translates to. Okay, so no kind of recognizable text in, in that case. So let's have a look at the loop 
which is occurring here. We have a loop and that's running around 20 times. And each time it loops, we can see that it's been they're assigning a value to the local 28 plus local 10, which is our loop index. Local 28 was this is a password string here. And it's assigning it the value then from 48 onwards, which again is using the index of the loop. And then it, it'll continue to loop round. It's going to call fgets to get the password off us, what we're going to enter as the password. And then it's going to do the comparison between the local 30, the the parameter we've just entered and local 28 which is the value which has been updated throughout this loop and then if the result comes back as zero so if those two strings match then it'll print out the flag otherwise we'll get I said you can't see me so although we've already solved this with ltrace what we could do here is go and have a look at this in GDB as well I'll open up GDB pwn debug and let's go and set a breakpoint at this string comparison and see what what happens So we'll open GDB pwn debug auth. We open this up, it's just some basic commands here. We can use info functions to get a list of the functions which are available to us. In this case, remember the binary was stripped, so we don't have like a main function and stuff that we can jump to. However, we could open radair from inside pwn debug, and then from there we could do AA to analyze flags. Let's do AFL to list the functions, and this will actually identify a main function. So we can then do S main and then PDF to disassemble that and go and have a look through the code. And we might want to do this if we didn't want to open this up in Geardra, we could go through and use these addresses to set up breakpoints or uh, use the addresses to you know to jump back and forward. We can also see that the, the values which are placed onto the stack here are actually converted into the strings as well. And it attempts to convert this into a string here, but obviously it needs the transformations to happen before it's gonna equal our flag. So in this example, let's see, where's our string comparison? We have the string compare right here. So why don't we take a copy of this address? I'll exit radair and then we'll set up a breakpoint. So I'm going to do break star to notate that it's uh, an address we want to break at. And then we're going to run the program. We get through to our welcome. So now we can, we can just say, let's put in a password. I'll just say password. And then it's instantly got to this breakpoint, and we can see that the string comparison which is occurring is comparing, whoops, you did see me, to the password that we entered, which was password. So obviously in this case, it's going to, it's not going to evaluate to true, so it's not going to print out the flag. If we hit C to continue, and you see we get there, I said you can't see me. We could also get the offsets or the addresses from Geardra as well to enter this in, so let me delete the breakpoints. And let's set up a breakpoint somewhere else. So we set up a breakpoint at the string comparison there, but we might want to try and debug this loop a little bit more and see what's going on there. So if we have a look at the loop, if, if we select different parts of this loop here, it's going to highlight different parts of the assembly code. So we might decide here that we're interested in seeing what value is being assigned to this location. Each time it loops around, it's assigning a new value here. So what's it assigning each time? So if we have a look here, we'll see that right here it's moving the look the value from the DL into our byte pointer so we could just set up a breakpoint here I'm gonna just take a copy of that address and let's go back to GDB now we'll set up this breakpoint 0x and paste paste in that new address try and run the program and you'll see it's got straight to the breakpoint before it's even asked us for the password it stopped at this address and we can see that we have the same instruction that we have right here and we're interested in what's this DL register holding before it is transferred over onto the stack. So we can simply just say here, let's do P DL, and that'll print out the decimal value. It's 119. We could do that as well and print it as hex. We'll see it's 77 in hex. What we're going to be interested in here is printing it as a character because obviously we know that the flag is going to be a string. And we can see that the first character shows us W. So let's do continue again. It's going to go through to the next breakpoint, which is going to be the next iteration of this loop. And then again, we could do the same thing, print that as a character. We'll see this one's H. And let's continue again, print the character. We'll see that this one is a zero. So this was, I think, the next character is going to be a underscore. Oh, it's a zero. Oh yeah, okay, so it was whoops was the beginning of the flag, so that's what we're getting at the moment. So the next will be a S. 
And yeah, we can basically continue in that fashion. If we want to delete the breakpoints, we can just delete the breakpoints, hit continue, and then it will continue execution as normal. But I thought I'd just include this, seeing as the challenge was quite short, just include a bit of uh, some basics on Gaedra and on GDB. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.